This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful presence and run your business. Wild story here. So this lens I've had for a long time. It's been sitting in a drawer for about 10 years. For whatever reason, I was thinking about it this morning. I pulled it out. I was going to see what kind of condition it's in. Maybe shoot on a little bit. And I looked in here and there's a... There's a bug in this lens, like right there, crammed between the elements. I mean, like, first of all, what bug decides that, hey, this lens looks like a good place to live? And how did he even get in here? I mean, the bug is bigger than any opening in this lens. I have no idea how this happened, but lo and behold, we've got a bug in this lens. And I got to thinking about it and I thought, well, I'm gonna shoot on this lens and I want to see, like, can we see the bug in the images? Because like, if this were on eBay and I were gonna buy it and I saw there was a bug in it, I probably would move along. So I brought it up to the studio and gave it a couple test shots, looked at the images and I can't see anything on here. In fact, this lens actually looks really good despite a bug being in the middle. And so I decided to compare it. Maybe, maybe just something was throwing me off. So I grabbed another lens that I have. This is an old Canon. This is an F1.2, it's a 55 millimeter and I compared it with a 50 millimeter F1.8 and so the obvious difference in focal length and the shallow depth of field doesn't exist as much on the f1.8 obviously but I can't tell a difference and I even stopped these down for fairness to f2.8 and in this case other than the obvious focal difference they look pretty much exactly like I cannot find the bug anywhere on here it looks sharp I even shot something with texture I took a picture just of the wall just so I could see texture on white to see if this bug is showing up anywhere it's not. I can't see the bug. I double checked the lens. He's still there, but no bug in the pictures. So I've heard about this before with other photographers who've had similar issues when they find an actual insect or something inside the lens. And it's funny because people get really bent out of shape about dirt and things like that, or maybe even little tiny scratches, or even sometimes a little bit of fungus. Fungus is not good because you can't get rid of it really, and it does get worse over time. But anything else in the lens, I think people get bent out of shape over. I certainly do. I like my things to be pristine. But this brings me to an interesting point is in generally speaking, you're not going to see it in your images. I actually was able to get the bug to show up. I've covered a lot of lenses on this channel and there's two things that come to mind. One, we see onion skinning in the out of focus circular areas, the bokeh balls, if you will. Sometimes you can see onion rings in those. And the other thing is when you're stopped down, if you don't have enough aperture blades and they're not circular enough, you start to see the little hexagonal shapes in there. I thought, well, if anything, I can probably get the bug to show up in the bokeh balls. And sure enough, he shows up. These are some string lights I keep around just to do bokeh testing. It represents what you'd see in the background if you were shooting a portrait let's say at a really shallow depth of field so basically what I do is I open the lens up all the way on the aperture and then bring the focus as close to me as possible the minimum focus distance and the bug does show up so I suppose this lens is good for everything except bokeh ball portraits which I don't do a whole lot of and even if you're not out of control with that you're probably still not going to notice in fact I would actually wager that nobody would probably notice anyway unless you're pixel peeping and you're the photographer. But as I was testing this lens to see if I could find the bug, I was reminded of how much I absolutely love old manual focus lenses from the 70s and 80s. I used to buy a lot of these back in the days. That's where this came from. I had no money in the early 2000s and it was like I was just shooting film a lot. Couldn't afford a digital camera back then and part of the deal was I loved the old stuff that people at the time were getting rid of very cheaply. So I remember getting this on eBay. I think I I paid $150 for it, which at the time was a little bit of a stretch for me. They've gone up in price since. I wish I had several, but actually interesting story of what happened to this lens and why it's been sitting in a drawer. So I love this lens. It has a wonderful contrast, especially for an F1.2. Canon made several versions of this. This is the 55 millimeter. There's several spherical versions of this as well. I have not shot on those. They're astronomically expensive when you can find them. So this is just the plain Jane version, but it's one that I really love. And one day I had this sling bag that I was using and I hated this sling bag because it kind of appeared like you had pockets shut when they weren't zipped up. And it's exactly what happened. And one day I was going down to my car. This was sitting in the top, I made it all the way down to the car. And as I turned around to take the sling bag off to throw it into the car, this lens fell down and hit the ground and it actually bent the sides and it froze the focus. And I was just absolutely destroyed. This was one of my favorite lenses and I always intended to get another one, just never got around to it. And so this went into a drawer and this was probably in about 2008 or so. So what the last 
13 years almost, it's been sitting in storage. So I pulled it out today and I got to thinking about it and I thought, I've got nothing to lose because this is more or less a frozen focus lens and nobody's gonna buy used lens that doesn't focus and I'd have to pay to get it repaired. So with nothing to lose, I just got to thinking, well, what would happen if I just took a flathead screwdriver and very carefully and gently tried to just bend the metal back into place and guess what? We got ourselves a functioning lens. It turns smooth as butter. Then I noticed the bug ADD kicked in and I spent the whole morning getting shots. Anyway, I thought this would make an interesting video in terms of used lenses and some of the myths about optics and what you can look for that actually would save you a considerable amount of money on older lenses. So I wanna talk about that a little bit, but real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our awesome sponsor today, who are the folks over at squarespace.com. Squarespace is the easiest way to build a website, photo gallery, or online store without having to write a single line of code. Start with one of their gorgeous templates, use their drag and drop interface, build your brand online. But Squarespace is way more than just a way to build a website. Squarespace provides an amazing set of tools to create revenue and run a business. Squarespace now features dedicated member areas, allowing you to connect with your audience and generate revenue through members only content. You can manage members, you can send them email communications, and you can leverage audience insights. Building an e-commerce site couldn't be any easier. And Squarespace Squarespace now also supports collecting donations, so you can get support for a cause or charity by gathering contributions with PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo, and build your audience using social sharing. The Squarespace blogging platform has a sharing button that you can customize that's going to allow sharing on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, StumbleUpon, Reddit, Pinterest, and Tumblr, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial. Once you feel that Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your first order by using offer code AOP on checkout or just use the link below this video. Once again, that offer code is AOP and I wanna give a special shout out and thanks to the awesome folks at Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about buying old lenses. First of all, why old lenses? Well, they have a rendering that is extremely unique compared to modern lenses. Modern lenses have a lot of glass, a lot of heft, they're very big and they're designed to correct all of the aberrations that exist and get the image to look as close to the human eye as possible even though that's debatable. Back in the 70s and 80s, we had a different set of technology for manufacturing and what was possible differed a lot from what it is today. And because a lot of these lenses aren't made anymore and literally jillions of them exist out there, usually hidden away in a closet, somebody will find it and they'll think, oh, I'm gonna get on eBay and sell some stuff and make a little money. So usually you can find these pretty cheap. Your mileage can vary though, because sometimes rare lenses do have value to them and they become very exorbitantly priced. And being the photography nerd that I am, I have bought lenses on both ends of that spectrum. I bought lenses as low as like 20 bucks and I bought them as high as well. well you don't wanna know how high. And with some exceptions, I mean, not everything is great, but if you do your homework and your research, you're gonna find that there's some really good deals on some stuff out there that you might be interested in. So let's say you get that far, you found a lens, maybe it's this one, it's the 55 F1.2, and you wanna find a really clean copy. You've researched it, and so what typically do people look for that would make them not want to spend money on something? Okay, bug in the lens would be one, but as you saw in my test examples a second ago, I'm not seeing the bug show up in photos except for the one case of bokeh balls in the background. So that could be a deal depending on what you shoot. It could be a way to save some money depending on what you shoot. You buy the really cheap lens that's got a bug jammed into it and it's gonna work perfectly well for your purposes. Another point of concern is scratching on the lens or cleaning marks. And a lot of times people who are selling lenses online will note things about the condition of the lens. And you're going to be looking at little tiny cleaning marks that you have to hold it up to a light to actually see in the front element and also the rear element. Let me share a little secret with you. That's a point where you can make a bargain. Well, this lens has scratches in it, so I don't wanna pay as much as you're asking, and you can end up getting really good deals on stuff because the truth is, scratches aren't even gonna show up in the bokeh balls. You're really not gonna see them. And the reason you don't see the bug and you don't see the scratches is lenses actually gather a lot of light rays when they come in, and it's the complexity of the design. It's also the point of focus. It's just too close for the image to actually pick up. It's inside the lens, so a lot of this just goes around whatever's in there. And with exceptions of like maybe 
actual damage to the glass, I don't think you're gonna notice a difference. Now, if a glass is scratched enough, you might get some haze effect and you might get a loss of contrast, but it would really have to have a lot of scratches in it and it probably would be something that you just wouldn't want anyway. But scratches are not a big deal. Another thing people like to obsess about is dust inside the lens. Yes, well, a bug got in here, so yes, dust does get in. The way some of these lenses work when you focus them, they actually expand and contract, bringing air out of any opening in the lens, and sometimes dust gets in. You're never gonna see dust, so dust particles are not a big deal. Same with, like, this one actually has some dirt around the bug that you saw earlier. You don't see any of that. That's another way to get a lens really cheap that's still gonna be an incredible performer. Another thing a lot of people don't realize is there are repair facilities that will do CLAs, or a cleaning lubrication adjustment to a lens. They'll take the whole thing apart, they'll lubricate it, they'll get it back together, it'll be all clean, it'll be as good as new. Now, it depends on what you've got and how much it bothers you, that does cost money to do, but it is available. So something that generally would be very expensive that's got some of these blemishes, you could probably get the lens cleaned up, you can't get scratches out, but anyway, you you can get a good lens really cheap and fix it up and maybe it's worth more. Now there are a few things that would keep me from buying a lens at all. One of them would be fungus. When you have fungus in a lens, it generally does not clean out. It's just going to be permanent damage to the glass and fungus does not go away. It kind of grows. Now there are ways that people have dealt with it if they just have a little bit in there. One of the methods is just to leave this out in the sun like a magnifying glass and hopefully that'll burn the fungus out. Really for me, that's not worth my time to even get into and deal with. And especially if you're paying too much for a lens that has fungus in it, I just wouldn't even touch it. I, I, I wouldn't go there. Yes, you probably could burn it out like a magnifying glass, but you've also got coatings on this lens, and I don't know. I kind of like to take care of my things. Fungus is a big no-no. Separation on the elements, usually sellers will note as well, and if an element is coming loose, that's another thing that's going to require a major repair, and it's just not worth it in that sense, so I generally move on from that as well. So as long as your glass elements are in reasonable shape, you can withstand a little bit of scratching on them. You're going to have a lens that's going to be a good performer, even when you have a frozen collar like this. I was able to kind of repair this one myself, but you can send this off and generally those things can be repaired as well. So if something's frozen solid, you can probably get it loosened up and working well again. So that is available as an option. One other thing I should mention is I am talking about manual focus lenses throughout this video. If you have an autofocus lens, it's a little bit different situation because you have electronic components that come into play. And there are lenses where if that breaks, it's either a costly repair if you can get it repaired and you may lose the ability to even focus on the lens, especially with things like focus by wire. But we're talking about manual focus lenses. If this is something you guys would like to hear me talk more about, drop me a comment below. I absolutely love these old lenses. I think they have a ton of character to them. I think you have just elements and quality of the image that you can't get on modern lenses. Modern lenses tend to be really sharp. There is a craze of MTF charts that goes on these days in terms of marketing. And those lenses are stellar if you need something that's really sharp. But I think probably because I'm such an old film nerd, in terms terms of like movies film, not just film, but I like a softer look and it's hard to call it softer. It's just not as sharp. It's just a little more natural. It's a really incredible rendering. So I'm going to go shoot some more on this lens. I would love to know what you guys think. Drop me a comment. See you in the next video. Until then, later.